This is worship for the second Sunday after Epiphany, January 17th, 2021. who calls us to hear and obey already knows the confessions of our hearts and is ready to forgive, let us confess our sin before God and before one another. Holy God, you see into each of us and know us fully as creatures in need of your constant care. We confess that we have neither heard your word nor followed your will. We have failed our nation, neighbors, families, friends, and ourselves. Give us ears to hear your wisdom. Lead us to honesty and faith so that we may begin again with renewed strength. In Jesus' name, amen. God knows the hearts of those who seek forgiveness, and by grace you have been saved. In Jesus' name you are forgiven. Your sins are no more. You have been made clean. God strengthens you with freedom through the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus, amen. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day praising you with the father and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen the old testament reading is from first samuel chapter 3 verses 1 through 20. now the boy samuel was serving the lord under eli the lord's word was rare at that time and visions weren't widely known one day, Eli, whose eyes had grown so weak he was unable to see, was lying down in his room. God's lamp hadn't gone out yet, and Samuel was lying down in the Lord's temple, where God's chest was. The Lord called to Samuel. I'm here, he said. Samuel hurried to Eli and said, I'm here. You called me? I didn't call you, Eli replied go lie down. So he did. Again, the Lord called to Samuel. So Samuel got up, went to Eli and said, I'm here. You called me? I didn't call you my son, Eli replied. Go and lie down. Now Samuel hadn't yet known the Lord and the Lord's word hadn't been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. He got up, went to Eli, and said, I'm here. You called me? Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So Eli said to Samuel, Go and lie down. If he calls you, say, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down where he had been. Then the Lord came and stood there, calling just as before, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel said, speak, your servant is listening. The Lord said to Samuel, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of all who hear it tingle. On that day, I will bring to pass against Eli everything I said about his household, every last bit of it. I told him that I would punish his family forever because of the wrongdoing he knew about, how his sons were cursing God, but he wouldn't stop them. Because of that, I swore about Eli's household that his family's wrongdoing will never be reconciled by sacrifice or by offering. Samuel lay there until morning and then opened the doors of the Lord's house. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli but Eli called Samuel saying, Samuel, my son, I'm here, Samuel said. 
What did he say to you? Eli asked. Don't hide anything from me. May God deal harshly with you, and worse still if you hide from me a single word from everything he said to you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. He is the Lord, Eli said. He will do as he pleases. So Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not allowing any of his words to fail. So Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was trustworthy as the Lord's prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning we'll read Psalm 139. This is from the message. God, investigate my life. Get all the facts firsthand. I'm an open book to you. Even from a distance, you know what I am thinking. You know when I leave and when I get back. I'm never out of your sight. You know everything I'm going to say. Before I start the first sentence. I look behind me and you're there. Then up ahead and you're there too. Your reassuring presence coming and going. This is too much, too wonderful. I can't take it all in. Oh yes, you shaped me first inside, then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, high God. You're breathtaking, body and soul. I am marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made, bit by bit. How I was sculpted from nothing into something. Like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life, all prepared. Before I'd even lived one day. Your thoughts, how rare, how beautiful. God, I'll never comprehend them. I couldn't even begin to count them. Any more than I could count the sand of the sea. Oh, let me rise in the morning and live always with you. The Holy Gospel for this second Sunday after Epiphany comes to us from the Gospel of St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. This is the story of Jesus calling Philip and Nathaniel. The next day, Jesus wanted to go into Galilee, and he found Philip. Jesus said to him, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael, and he said to him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and the prophets, Jesus, Joseph's son, from Nazareth. Nathanael responded, Can anything from Nazareth be good? And Philip said, Come and see. Now Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said about him, Here is a genuine Israelite in whom there is no deceit. And Nathanael asked him, How do you know me? Jesus answered, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are God's son. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. I assure you that you will see heaven open and God's angels going up to heaven and down to earth upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I want to ask a favor of you. I'm not sure where and how you are listening 
right at this moment. I'm sure some of you are watching, just watching, but I'm also aware that some of you are listening as you're doing other things. But I'd like to ask you to just stop and focus, except if you're driving, which then keep on driving. But even then, I want you to listen and let your mind take you wherever it goes when you hear the following names. I want you to think of Luddington. What do you see when I say Shelby? Montague. Muskegon Heights, Pentwater, Rothbury, Hart, Muskegon, Silver Lake. As I read those names, I'm curious, what did you see? Did you see the place? that I said, or did you see the people who live there? Oftentimes it's hard to distinguish the person from the place that they come from. And we make a lot of assumptions about someone based upon their geographical place and their history. I want you to name, I want to name one more place for you. Are you ready? Okay, I want you to focus. Washington, D.C. What did you see this time? If you're like me, the images you saw were not very good ones. The news has been full of pretty horrific visions the last 10 days or so, and it's been pretty upsetting. And I don't care what side of the political divide you're on. I think we can all agree that our country and our nation, it's broken right now. And it's terribly, terribly sad. Seeing troops and fences and concrete barriers all over that beautiful city that represents our nation's democracy, well, it's heartbreaking. So, when I heard the opening words of the Old Testament lesson for this morning, it took my breath away. Did you notice how our Old Testament reading began? It started out this way. Now the boy Samuel was serving the Lord under Eli. The Lord's word was rare at that time. And visions weren't widely known. What a sad commentary on a society. Can you imagine living in a time when the Lord's word would be rare among the people and not very well known. And worse yet, the citizens of a nation had no vision for how to be the kind of people that God is calling them to be. I just can't. I just can't even stand the thought. And it makes me feel so sad for the people of that time. Yet I know there are people in every time and place who feel disconnected from the word of God, who feel very far apart from God and wonder where God is in the midst of their hurting and in their suffering. They can't seem to capture the vision of who God is calling them to be and what God is calling them to do because they are disconnected from God's word. I can't help but wonder if that isn't the case right now. How about you? They see all that is going on in the world and they want to know, where is God? This is not a new question, not in the least. As we've talked about many, many times before, the Jewish people under the thumb of Roman domination wondered when God would send the promised Messiah that would rescue them from their suffering. This morning, we're introduced to two young men who are apparently students of God's word. From their movements and interactions, we can see that they have an obvious receptivity to God working in their lives. Maybe we can even say they have a hunger for God in their life. First, we meet Philip. His encounter with Jesus 
as presented in John's Gospel, is seemingly brief, but it must have been very intense. Jesus says, follow me. And those words are like a starter gun. For Philip is immediately off like an evangelical rocket. He can't wait to share the word, the person of Jesus with his friend Nathaniel. And now this guy, Nathaniel, we get him. He's learned, he's smart, maybe too smart. And he thinks he knows all the answers. Philip is so excited about Jesus. He says, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and the prophets. Jesus, Joseph's son from Nazareth. And our smart guy, Nathaniel, says, can anything from Nazareth be good? I love it. It's like what I asked you before. Think of all those places I asked you about before. Did you see geographic places like landscapes or did you see inhabitants? People who you think are representative of the type of people who live in that place. Well, Nathaniel couldn't see anybody good coming from Nazareth. And he wasn't wrong. Nazareth was a two-bit town of 200, maybe 400 people. It was dependent completely on the larger town of Sepphoris, which was the capital of Galilee in the first years of Herod Antipas's reign as the Tetrarch or ruler of that, of that country. It's never mentioned in scripture, much less associated with messianic expectation. So Nathaniel is right. What's Philip talking about? What good can come from Nazareth? And we need to note Philip's answer to him. It's plain. It's simple. It's not defensive or coercive in the least. He simply says, invitingly, well, come and see. And then comes the good part. Nathaniel comes. But it's Jesus who sees or knows all about this man, Nathaniel, and he says, I believe with a twinkle in his eye, not to mention a bit of flattery, here is a genuine Israelite in whom there is no deceit. For a man like Nathaniel, this kind of flattery, well, it gets his attention, and so he asks, how do you know me? Jesus answered, before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathaniel replies, Rabbi, you are God's son. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus replies, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. I assure you that you will see heaven open and God's angels going up to heaven and down to earth upon the son of man. Now, are you wondering about the fig tree? What that's all about? I'm so happy to share some information I learned from Pastor Lori Wagner, who shared this explanation. The Jewish faith asserts that the Torah is like a tree of knowledge for those who study it. It produces the fruit of new teachings generation after generation. Those who studied the Torah, the source of redemption, were said to be sitting under the fig tree. To sit under a fig tree meant to sit under the shade of a rabbi's teaching, enjoying the sweet fruit of his instruction and wisdom and that of the Torah. So Nathaniel sitting under the fig tree means that Jesus knows he has been studying and seeking the truth about God that he's been hungering and yearning for God, seeking that which will satisfy his soul. And Jesus comes to him to fulfill that need. But all of Nathaniel's presuppositions and dearly held beliefs will not bring him to salvation. He will learn new things under Christ's tutelage. Jesus sees Nathanael for who he is, and in recognizing him, Jesus starts Nathanael on a journey of faith that will lead him to places he has yet to envision. So many people lost in our world today want to also begin that journey. 
People that for us may seem like they are from Nazareth. People that are completely different and people that are completely other from us. They look, they believe, they live, and yes, they vote completely differently than we do. But here's the truth. They also hurt and hunger for God just like we do. But we know something they don't know. We know that the word of the Lord is not rare in our land. We know that the word of the Lord is right here in the love and grace of Jesus Christ that we experience every day, every week, week in and week out. We know there is a God who loves them and us fully and who has loved them and known them from their very creation. As the psalmist says, like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I'd even lived one day. Your thoughts, how rare, how beautiful. God, I'll never comprehend them. I couldn't even begin to count them any more than I could count the sand of the sea. Oh, let me rise in the morning and live always with you. How are we to tell them about this wondrous love of God? How are we to tell them about this wondrous love that can make them whole? It boils down to three simple words. Come and see. Amen. confess our faith in the words of the apostles creed i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the power of the holy spirit and born of the virgin mary he suffered under under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers of the church. Let us pray for all the earth, the church, and all those in need, saying, God of grace, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all people of faith, for the unity of the body of Christ, that divisions might not turn people away from the church. For peoples of all faiths, that wherever prayers are raised up, the one God of all will hear. For all people who nurture life in the name of the greatest, greater good, God of grace, 
Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the world, for leaders of nations, that wisdom and integrity will prevail for the good of all people, especially the poor and dispossessed for their regions torn by conflict, that peace may reign and living become an enterprise of construction rather than destruction. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own nation, for the president and for the president elect, for Congress, the Supreme Court, and all who serve as judges. We pray for those who work in state governments, local councils, and those who, who serve on school boards. We pray for the safety of all elected officials. Give them wisdom and courage as they carry out their calling to make policy and laws that will benefit all the people they are called to serve. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those in need because of the coronavirus, for all those suffering with the virus, for those who live in fear of the virus, and for those who are isolated because of the virus. We ask for your healing and comforting presence upon them all. We pray for all whose lives have been upended by the virus, that solutions, support, and sustenance will be found for them. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those in need from our congregation. This morning we offer up prayers for these people who we love and care for. Nancy Chase, Lynn Schmelick, Bob Kirk, Nancy Johnsack, Mary McKenzie, and Lynn Felt. We also lift up Rossanne Craig, Pat Lombard, Ginny Foster, Todd Holly, Bill McKenzie, Amy Maxson, Dorina Stark, and Margaret Vile Amstis. God of grace, hear our prayer. Let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And receive the benediction. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.